This is the talk show with Vic, aka Mr. Never Chillin, and I'm here today on episode 7 with one of my great friends, Joel Falcon. What's up, Vic? What's going on, man? Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, man. Means yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to get you on here, too. Um, kind of unfortunate, perfect timing for you, but uh, uh, if you wanted to go ahead and introduce yourself, like who you are, like what do you do, like maybe a fun fact about yourself. Yeah, um, like I said, I appreciate you having me on. Um, my name is Joel Falcone from the Harrisburg area. Um, I'm actually a uh, salesman, that's what I do for a living. And I'm also a high school basketball coach um, in the local area. And, um, you know, a fun fact about me is um, when I'm not working or uh, coaching basketball, I like to do things out on the water. I love to go fishing and uh, mm-hmm. take my boat out and stuff like that. So that's probably something that's like my passion that some people might not know other than basketball. Right, right. I'll be seeing your pictures on Facebook and stuff, the, all the fish yeah. you be catching. I was like, man, it's it's been a long time since I went fishing. Like, I literally have all my fishing yeah. stuff in the back of my trunk of my car at all times. Oh, yeah. But I haven't been fishing yeah. in, like, five years at least. Yeah, I, I just enjoy it, man. It's peaceful and... uh I like being on the water, man. It just keeps your mind off of things, you know? Right, right. No, yeah, it's, it's definitely fun, man. It definitely shows that we get older, too, because I feel like that's an old man sport, you know, like golf yeah, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, nah, it's, it's definitely fun. But, uh, yeah, man, let's get into the reason why we're all here today. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about your basketball journey from player to coach. Um, who, who did you play for in high school? So, um, I played I played under uh, Dewan Lee um, at Bishop McDevitt. And um, Coach Lee was a great player um, back in the day. He also was um, had some recent success as a girls coach um, at Harrisburg High as of late. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was under him for a few years at Bishop McDevitt. You know, I had a great, great experience at McDevitt. Um, I grew up in the Catholic school system, so my goal was to kind of stay with that and also um, – you know, just come up through McDevitt, and I enjoyed it. You know, I did well. Um, my brother and I, we both went there. And mm-hmm. We had a lot of success there. It was a good time for sure. Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. Um, so, like, preparing, like, for you, did you play in college at all? Yeah, so actually when I left McDevitt, um, you know, I was kind of up in the air with things. Like, I, I didn't – I was on the fence if I wanted to go, like, away and kind of get away from the town and go to school or if I wanted to stay local. So it was kind of a tough decision for me. And basketball wasn't really in the mix at the time. I was just more or less focused on, you know, getting my degree and just um, going to class and stuff like that. So, you know, I decided to um, stay local and take classes at hack. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also um, I was working a full time job while I was doing it as well. So um, I was really learning business side of it while I was going to school. So it's kind of tough to juggle both. And then I found out, you know, um, Hack did have a basketball team. I had some friends that I played against in the Commonwealth that actually played for Hack. You know, guys were trying to get me to come out for the team and. I ended up going out there. I worked out with the team for a while and um, just didn't really work out as far as joining it then because I was just focused on other things, school and work and things like that. So I wasn't able to really um, play and stuff like that. But um, I I definitely enjoyed the experience meeting new people and being around um, new kids that came from all different high schools. You know, I got got to meet some new people. So... um, yeah, it was a good time out there for sure. Right, no doubt. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so like when you were when you were uh, graduating high school, like you said, it, um, you weren't really sure. Like, did you do anything to prepare for that transition from high school to college, even even for like the academic purposes? Well, I'll tell you what. I, when I look back on it, um, if I had to do it over again, I definitely would have done a lot of things differently for sure. Um, I I think one thing that's really important. Um, and I, I can kind of like help kids if they're watching this or parents, you know, it, it, it's very important, not just to take school seriously, but you have to do it from ninth grade to 12. Like it, it's not just show up when you want to and turn <laughs> right. the switch on, you know, Vic, when you want to get good grades, 
because because you know not only did I go to school with kids that do it but I've um, coach kids throughout the years that have tried to turn the switch on when it's too late and then you know once once it's too late then you kind of get in trouble where you don't know what to do or, or you might not have the grades to get into that school or this school so you know my advice for um, any kids is you know I, I just think it's important for you to as soon as you get into ninth grade you really have to like work on your academics to prepare for that next level because whether you're playing a sport or not, colleges are going to look at your grades in ninth and tenth. And right. you know, a lot of people think if they if you're not like you get to school and you're kind of just messing around those first two years, and then when you get in your eleventh, twelfth grade year, you can turn it back on. Like that's not how it works. Right. Like they're going to look at the entire <laughs> body of work of all four years and see the progress that you've had and things like that. So. If I had to look back on it, I would have definitely um, did it that way for sure. Um, that's why I really try to preach that now, mm-hmm. to take it serious from day one all the way till the day you graduate. I think that's important. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that I just, I just couldn't imagine. Like, I, I've always, I hate to say, I've always been, like, one of those nerdy kids. Like, I always took school serious from the jump. But I've going to Steel High, I've, I watched those kids where they're just, like, fucking around all day. Nine, yeah. nine. I mean, because still high, the high school is seventh through twelfth grade, so like they they didn't change like seventh through like tenth grade, and then they finally realized in junior senior year they're like, oh crap, I might want to do what I need to do because they're starting to repeat courses. They're they got to go to summer school. Like it's it, it becomes more of a hassle if you just don't if you just take care of it then you won't have to worry about it in the long run. So yeah, it, it definitely makes sense to do that, but um, uh, any any other basketball experience that you had? Like, did you play in AAU at all? So believe it or not, when I was playing um, in high school, AAU was just kind of getting really, it was just getting popular when I was in about, let's see here, I think it was like ninth grade. Mm-hmm. That was when AAU was really getting popular. It just started. Like nowadays, it's It's, it's all popular. over the place. You know, that's everybody, every kid plays AAU now. But like when I was coming up, AU wasn't the, wasn't really the thing. Like the thing was going out to the parks and playing. Like that's kind of what the thing was back in the day when it came to hooping. Mm-hmm. So and AU was really expensive too. Like coming up because like nobody really knew about it, especially like people's parents didn't know about it. And you know it was important. It was expensive to join a team, and then you know travel right. costs and um, just jerseys, hotels, like food, everything. So. I ended up, I, I had a few people reach out to me about playing on their teams. I ended up not playing. I was, it was just still so new to me. And right. I just kind of like staying. I, like I, I did a lot of stuff the old school way. I like going out to parks to get better. I like getting in the gym, um, lifting, doing that type of stuff. I just wasn't really into that AAU scene just yet because I don't think I knew had enough knowledge on it. Right. Um, now I look back on it, you know, if I had to play now in today's society, I'm sure I would. Um, it definitely is came a long way for sure, in a good way, um, right. as far as, like, recruiting purposes to get you into college, um, things like that. So, yeah, I never never played AAU or anything, but um, definitely was, uh, like, for sure now it's it's totally different. Right, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, yeah, I definitely agree. Like, AAU, even even on, like, my end, like, I didn't get into AAU prior to, like, my sophomore or, like, junior year, maybe, senior year as well. And it's just, like, I it wasn't really as big. But, like, now you look at it, there's teams popping up all over the place. Like, Oh, yeah. It's oh, just, yeah. like, People it, love it. Yeah. if you want to go to the next level, it's, like, you almost have to play AAU. Like, if you don't play AAU, you're not going to get that extra exposure because, like, you, you go you even if your team's not the greatest you might go play in a tournament where you got a number one and number two kid in your class and you're going to get the exposure because th- there's scouts there to watch them yeah. and if you yeah. if you're going there and you're showing out and doing your thing like i, I think aau to me was important i, I feel like mm-hmm. i got like my most exposure from aau um as opposed to my high school but um um another another thing i want to touch on though how, how did that how did that transition for you though from being a player to a coach like how how did that work uh, so that's that's this is a good one. So, um, well, so believe it or not, Vic, um, I, I used to love playing all the time. Like out at the parks, 
anywhere I could play. I mean, I was just right. a gym rat. I mean, I love playing basketball. It was my life. It was my passion. You know, you know, I can remember playing. Um, I used to play with a lot of guys growing up in Steelton, and um, I can remember. I used to go up to the Steel High Open gyms, and um, I would play up there, and we would scrimmage. A couple of the older guys would scrimmage the uh, the current team that year. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was. We would do that the whole summer long. We would go up and scrimmage them, and we always had the same teams. And, you know, when I was scrimmaging those guys, while I was playing, I was also kind of trying to be a mentor to some of them younger kids. I had some age on those kids. Mm -hmm. They were younger. Um, I was more of a young adult up there playing with high school kids and stuff like that. So I thought, you know, not only can I play, but I can also kind of teach them along the way. Right. So, if, you know, I was there'd be plays where if a kid did something, maybe I, I used to do back in the day and I could correct him or maybe help him out. I used to do it and just kind of pull him aside and tell him while we play. So, you know, long story short, um, I was somebody approached me and, you know, said to me, you know, I think you'd be a really good coach someday. Like, what do you think about coaching? So, um, I kind of like chuckled at first. It was kind of funny, but mm-hmm. I always wanted to kind of be a coach. I just didn't know it would come this fast um, at that age because I was still pretty young yet. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, I got um, I got offered to top on the Steel High staff, and um, it was definitely I was very humbled by it and appreciative, and um, it, it was exciting for me because. I always knew I wanted to be a coach at some point. I just didn't know it was going to be that quick. Right. So, you know, I hopped on as a volunteer that year, and I really uh, learned under some great guys and uh, some great coaches. And, you know, I, I was still young yet, so I didn't want to go in there and act like I knew everything because I knew I did it. So I kind of sat back and really just took in some knowledge from, from some legends up there and, um, things went really well. I was up there for a few years. Um, so that was really how I transitioned into coaching. And then um, now I end up, uh, well, after a few years there, I ended up getting a job offer at McDevitt that I took. And it, it was, I've been so thankful to be there from day one. Um, just very appreciative that I got the opportunity to, to go back to my alma mater and be a coach. Um, Right. There's really no better feeling um, to do that. So um, that's kind of how I transitioned out of player um, into my coaching career and where I'm at currently now. But it's just crazy um, when, you, when you surround yourself with different people and kind of where basketball can take you once you meet more people. And right. it, basketball has been very good to me, and um, I, I think I still have a lot of uh, – Good, good basketball and, and uh, good opportunities ahead of me in, in the future. For sure, for sure. So you coaching at McDevitt, are you just an assistant coach for the varsity team or do you help out with the JVs as well? Yeah, so I'm actually, I'm the current uh, JV head coach. Okay. I'm also the varsity uh, assistant, one of the head varsity assistants. So, um, you know, my responsibility is obviously I'm helping both teams out and um, it's, it's a lot of work, but I, I love doing it. Um, the kids are great there. Um, it's kind of like a, a mini college there. You know, the kids come there to – they know why they want to go to school there and really take it to another level academically and also on the court and, and get prepared to go to college. So that's the role I've been in now for um, five seasons. Next year will be my sixth season. So – um, eight overall coaching. So, I mean, I, I'm getting close to the 10 year mark. Yeah, that's crazy, which is right? It's kind of crazy how fast <laughs> that goes because, like I said, I feel like I was just playing yesterday, man. So, it's very, um, I'm very thankful for the, some of the opportunities I've had with both schools. No, yeah. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome to hear, man. Like, it's crazy to think, like, your transition happened, like, basically on the court. Like, you were playing yeah. and basically got offered, like, yo, you should coach, like, yeah. because of what you're doing right now. So, like, it, it, it's crazy. It's, like, metaphor metaphorically and, like, physically, like, your transition happened like that. Yeah, yeah so, like, it was, 
I mean, it's just you never think of something like that. You know, I'm wearing my basketball sneakers on the court. <laughs> and, you know, that night it was like I, I took them off and set them aside and put on some penny loafers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, like, I, I just transitioned like that. And it, I, I just i am very thankful that somebody seen that side of me um, mm. as being a young coach and just kind of pulled it out of me because – you know, I might not have known that I ever could be a coach if it wasn't for somebody that came up and said that to me. So, Right. Yeah. What's crazy, though, is how we used to play at Main Street in Middletown all the time, right? And, like, yeah. I didn't realize it then, but looking at looking back at it now, like, you would, you would always come up to me like, yo, keep your head up. Like, you always kept me motivated. Like, yo, go do this, go do that, or whatever it was. It was just, like, it, it just made me, like, want to keep playing, like, keep trying, like, hard. Like if I was having a bad day or something like that, you was you was in my ear like, yeah, you just yeah. keep it up, like keep shooting, man, like it's all right, like like little stuff like that are just like yeah. those small characteristics of a coach. Like the coach has to be there like for you through bad times and good times. Like you can't be yeah. a good, you can't be like the player's coach only during times that they're good. Like you also got to be there Absolutely. when they're not that good either. You you said that right on, Vic, and it's that's something I learned along the way, and I think that's when you surround yourself with, with positive people and, and, you know, people that have great goals and stuff, that they, they spread that good knowledge to you. And, you know, it, it's contagious. It, it's right. a good thing. Right. And, you know, for me, like you just brought up an example, like that was always important to me. Like no matter how rough it is in the game, got to find a way to still be positive with your teammates, with your coaches, um, with everybody so you know it's just how it is you've got to stay positive no matter what and that and that translates right into uh in life too you know if, if you're going through things in life you know you just got to get through them and be positive it's kind of like the covid stuff you know you just gotta we know we're all going to get through it you just got to be positive and um, do the right things and we'll get through things right yeah exactly for sure um one 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 like last question here before we move on to the next segment. Do you, do you still play ball now? So I'm actually I'm I'm retired for good. <laughs> now I I do like every once in a while I'll um I'll get some shot workouts in. They don't involve me running, which <laughs> obviously saves me from getting hurt. And, right. Um, but I I do I'll, I'll get some competitive shot workouts, some three point or foul shots or. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that, but I, I don't play any five on five or any type of contact at all anymore. I'm just you know, I'm just totally um, transitioned to the coaching side now. I'm done with playing. Gotcha. Would, would you ever come out of it? Like come out of retirement and play? Cause you well, think about all the, all the old guys we used to play with, man. We, yeah, we, we, we gonna be the old guys out. eventually. <laughs> that that's a very good question. Um, and I, I thought of that before. Um. It would it would have to depend on my my job current, at the current time and you know mm-hmm. is it is it safe for me to play without getting hurt and affecting my um, professional and personal life? But you know I don't want to count it out. Maybe right, yeah. So maybe, maybe one day you lace up the sneaks again. Yeah, you're already pushing me back into it. So <laughs> I, I, don't push too hard. I might end up playing this weekend or something. So. Right, right. Man, I'm, I miss playing ball, man. Like, like I said, I, yeah. I haven't played in like a year, so hopefully when I move back to PA um, yeah. at, towards the end of this year, man, I can't wait to get back to into the gym because it'll be easier for me to find basketball like places to play again when I'm back home Oh yeah. because I don't really yeah. know any places to play down here. Right. Like, right. Even outside, like there's to me, like there's barely any parks. Like There's nowhere. I'm just like, I just don't get it. Like Back yeah, home, right, we got right. parks every other block. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, you want to uh, throw in any other input on your journey at all before we move on to the next segment? No, I think we pretty much uh, touched most of it as far as like my coaching journey and stuff. I, you know, I just probably one thing I would say is I just want to like you know thank the people that have helped me get to where I am. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've had a lot of fun doing this, and that's why I do it. I enjoy being around kids. I enjoy giving back and meeting other coaches and players. And I, I've just met so many people through the game. And, um, you know, a lot of my mentors have really um, been huge on just me being, like, around and stuff like that and really um, helping me get to where I am right now. And also 
get to where I'm going. So, you know, I definitely have more goals to, than where I'm just at now. So I think uh, I just want to thank all the people that have been kind of like in my side and really helped me get through things. No, yeah, that's awesome. Can't wait to see you as a head coach here soon, man. That's the hey, next step. I, <laughs> like as a, a diversity. Goal, Vic, man. I, I appreciate you, man. That's, that's, that's my goal, man. You know, it's it's going to be take time and patience and um i I still have a lot of learning to do but um i'm hopeful one day that that i can um get to my ultimate goal and that's definitely my goal for sure right no doubt no doubt um yeah man that's awesome to hear uh let's let's move on to another segment here we got some uh, great advice coming up here for all the student athletes in the harrisburg area for sure um we're gonna talk about like how to be successful like on and off the court now um what what advice would you start off with like giving to these kids well i mean something i touched on earlier i think that's very important um you know as a high school um high school student or student athlete i just think it's very very important once you get into high school to really understand why you're there and what your goal and purpose is you know a lot of people um like just go to school and they're just kind of like not applying yourself like the whole point is you know you have to get to school prepare yourself set goals and, and you know take care of your grades and schoolwork, and then you know all the other stuff will follow behind it when you're applying yourself so i think it's very important for kids once they get to high school to really learn to apply yourself early um learn to you know, if, if you need help or you're struggling in something, like, don't be afraid to reach out um, and, and try to get some help. That way you can get back on track. And, and I think that's just kind of, like, a good way to start off with some advice for any kids in the area. Like, you know, go into high school with goals. Like, set yourself on goals on all your classes, what you want to achieve. Um, and then you, you kind of back your goals up even more on – where you may want to go to college right. or may, what you want to do and things like that. So, yeah, that's probably what I would say to start off for sure. Right, yeah, for sure. What, what, what kind of programs or opportunities do you, do you think, like, some of these kids have in, in, in the Harrisburg area? Well, I'll tell you what. I think um, it's very important, um, not just for students but athletes as well, um, to join as many things as possible. One, because, you know, it, it helps you in a few different ways, Vic. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's sports or clubs or, or any type of volunteering or whatever it is, mm -hmm. I think it's very important for you to get into multiple things. Some people like to do just one sport or just sign up for one club or just do one event. You know, I think it's important to have more options in, in your back pocket because, you know, one, you can learn a lot more knowledge and team bonding and things like that when you're involved with just more than one sport. Um, same with clubs as well, you know, whether it's a language club or a writing club or um, anything like um, whether it's with the library. I just think it's very important to not stick to one thing and really be involved in a lot of different things because – not only does it help with the team bonding and the teamwork, but it also gives you more responsibility um, with different clubs and teams. It will um, you learn a lot more from getting involved with those, and and you know later down the road, not just in college but in life, it's going to help you when you're involved in just more than one one thing. So I think that's definitely some advice I could give a kid. Right, yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And plus, I the way I look at it too is it helps you keep them keep them out of trouble off the streets and yeah. stuff like that. Because I know that's like a big area. At least I know in the Harrisburg area, or at least just in the Central PA, is just like a lot of kids. Like when they're not in school, they're out like just fucking around and, and getting in trouble yeah. and not really learning about what life is really going to take. So like getting yourself involved in those kind of things can like help you teach things or find things that you might like. It might trigger something like, hey, I might want to go to school for this or. Um, or you build connections too, like, because like, I think about it now is just like being in certain, like being, it, when I played for, for different sports, like I built relationships both with my, my, my player, my teammates and my coaching staff. 
So it, it, it opens up doors, too, in the future because, like, if you ever need help, you can go to these people, too, for oh, other absolutely. things not related to that as well. You're absolutely right, man. But, um... Who, who can they usually like reach out to like say someone's like struggling with something like if it's schoolwork or a life or like stuff at home well i'll tell you what that's that's a good one because i think a lot of kids need this is i i think it's important not just as adults but teachers coaches uh mentors trainers mm-hmm. um all of the above I, I just think it's so important that we need to help our kids in the local area um they need to understand that there's always help out there if if they if needed and you know they they kids i think the biggest thing is they're embarrassed sometimes to ask for help you know they don't want to be that kid that's uh, that needs help you know right. and i i understand it because i was in those same uh, footsteps at times and um i think it's important you know if it's in sports, you know, to go to your coaches and maybe see if you can put in some more reps, whether it's your teachers to, you know, if you're not understanding something, maybe you can um, try to get, like, like try to sit down with them and make, make them help you understand things a little bit easier. Or also, you know, a lot of tutors are available throughout schools. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then there's also a lot of different, like, different programs like like within schools as well like like kind of what we talked about activities and you know volunteering and really just learning about responsibility and i think that once you go to see that um get involved with that type of stuff and really surround yourself with good people good friends um i I think it'll help you majorly down the road right for sure yeah definitely agree on that and like I think every everyone just needs to realize whether in high school or even outside of high school, it's okay to ask for help. Like I think there's Absolutely. a there's something that's that might be inside of us. It's like we're we're afraid of like our pride. Like we're so pride about like we have so much pride, and it's just like I don't need to ask for help. Like I'm gonna do this. Like sometimes it's so it, like you have to ask for help. Like you don't know the answers to everything. Like we're not perfect. Like this is the only way we're ever gonna learn as well. Like otherwise, mm-hmm. like the only way to learn is by asking questions. That's that's one of my biggest things. Like and it's the same thing in school because like if you don't understand something and you're just going to sit in the back of the classroom and like not raise your hand like not ask questions the teacher's going to keep moving on and you're still going to be way back here not not understanding what what just happened in the lesson Mm -hmm. and then but instead if you ask the question the teacher will slow down it'll stop he'll revisit um whatever it is and i mean same thing in, in sports too like think about it like basketball for instance if you're going over to plays and you're not understanding where someone's yeah. supposed to be or like f- spacing the floor out properly or when the cut or stuff like that like ask like yeah it, it's yeah. the only way you're going to understand even even in sports as well absolutely you're totally right um but do you have any other advice for the uh the student athletes in the the harrisburg area on being successful on and off the court before we move on um yeah you know i think one other thing i could touch on um i I think it's just very important especially when you get to high school um just trying to find a solid group of friends you know peer pressure these days is very very big it's tough it's been like that forever like like when everybody goes well everybody deals with it and it it can be very difficult to say no to certain situations so i think you know i always uh, thought when i surrounded myself with with a a good group of people that um did the right things not just in school but outside as well Mm -hmm. um like on and off the court i think that was huge for me because i didn't get tied I didn't get tied up in things that I shouldn't have been getting into. And, you know, I kind of took that and translated it to my personal life right now, even as a grown adult. Um, I I really try to just surround myself with positive and and good people because I I enjoy doing what I do for uh, both my jobs. And I I just want to set good examples and really be positive and successful. And, you know, when you surround yourself with people that are going to take you down the wrong road, it's not going to help you. So I think my advice is as for kids is find that solid group of kids. If they're getting in trouble, you know, walk away. Mm-hmm. They're getting into things they shouldn't be doing, you know, turn the other way and 
you know, hang out with other kids that are going to do the thing the right way, but still have fun in the midst of it. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because like sometimes, like you said, being in with the wrong group can can, can lead to a lot of bad things. And yeah. and honestly, it, it it is hard to leave your friend group because those are the people who you've built a relationship with and you felt comfortable with. And change is never ever going to be comfortable. And you have to learn that at a young age because when you become an adult, change happens all the time and it's super uncomfortable and stuff like that. So making that change from bad group of friends to new group of friends is like going to a new school. Like you don't know anybody, so you're like relearning. Like, But that's a life lesson because like you go into new jobs all the time. You go into new cities all the time when you're visiting and stuff like that. You're always going to meet new people. And it's going to be uncomfortable at first until you, you get comfortable. So like you got to learn that early. And like I, I, I definitely agree with you. Get, get with the right people that are going to have a better mindset for you that's going to help you get to where you need to go but it goes back to what you said set your goals early you have to have your goals up front because without those you're not going to be able to make these decisions because like if you have this spectacular goal you want to reach and you're out here making bad decisions you're going to be like well this isn't helping me reach my goal as opposed to like if you don't have a goal like a goal at all you're just like all right cool i'm out here just having fun with air yeah. quotes and you're just not not caring about it because you're not realizing right. the impact it's going to have on your life down the road absolutely but um yeah man that's that's awesome but uh if anyone ever needs help definitely reach out to uh, me or joel here i'm sure if we can't figure it out we'll we'll help you figure it out as well there's there's tons of uh, resources and people who we can personally reach out to or at least point you in the right direction but um let's move on to our last segment here of the evening um we're going to talk about some advice for the uh, high school kids w- for their next phase like whatever it, it whether it's going from high school to college high school to military or high school to the workforce um so um joel what what should these kids like start to do before like graduating and moving on to the the next step well i'll tell you what this topic's very interesting because you know i was kind of a part of this topic um when I was leaving high school, I was a little unsure of what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's kind of scary because you're, you're taking the next big step in your life. You're turning it into a next, like you're going to the next chapter of your life. And, you know, when you're unsure about it, it's definitely can be nerve wracking, you know, and people like, you know, you're going to get that question a lot in high school, like, where are you going? Like, what college are you going to? What's, what are you doing next? What's your major? This, that. Like, you're going to hear those questions all year, all four years. So I think it also ties in again with the goals. You know, it's very important to realize that you have options out there. Um, you know, I highly encourage every kid to go to college. I think that's the best way to be successful after high school. Um, but you know, sometimes it's not always that meant to be that way. Sometimes people want to go, um, into the military. So, you know, you could talk to, uh, military based people that may come into your schools or, you know, get to learn different parts of the military. There's nothing wrong at all, um, with getting into those fields. Um, you know, also another idea is, you know, getting into a trade. Um, nowadays, you know, trades are just very important in this world right um especially um you know there, there are just so many jobs out there that involve like handy skills and stuff like that mm-hmm. so to me i think it's important for us as coaches and mentors and teachers and that that um state to really let kids know like there's options for you out there and it's not just one thing and because we want to make all these kids um be successful when they get out in in harrisburg area and do something successful and positive with their lives that way they they're living good we we, you don't ever want to see a kid um you know leave high school and just be completely um uh, i should say lost for words you know just not really having any type of direction Right. And that's when things can always go in different different ways that they shouldn't go. And so I think it's important for, again, for kids to reach out and, and realize there there is options out there um, to go, whether it's any of the three topics I talked about. And there, there's tons of resources that you can kind of check out, you know, whether you're going to a college or 
re, you want to research what kind of fits your field as far as majors or where uh, the living style or the, the type of team they are. Um, right. And then same with like, you know, what's going to happen after college. Like you really got to look ahead. And, you know, the same goes with the, uh, the military and the workforce as well. Like you have to understand what it's going to be like years after you join one of these, whether it's the trade or the military or college. Like what's going to happen after that? So are you going to be successful or set yourself up? So to me, Vic, I think it's just important for kids to know that you can be successful in all three of those. Mm-hmm. But I think if, if, if you're in a situation like I was personally and you didn't really have a, a direction at the time, you're young and you just kind of just don't know what you want to do yet. You're, it's like you're just not ready to figure out what you want to do. I right. think it's important to at least try something first better than not doing anything at all right so at least I think, in your life. you know yeah so i think if you know you are leaning on the phase of going to college but you're still not a hundred percent that you want to do it right i encourage it to do it because you know i think if you get to college and for some reason college isn't for you then maybe you can take that next step whether it's a trade or the military but at mm-hmm. least you're having a goal in your life and, and it goes same with the uh, the other two as well you know, if you think that you want to maybe join the military and you do, then, then go for it. Same with the, the trade. If you want to get into a trade and try something out and, and it, it works or it doesn't work, then you make the decisions afterwards. But at least your goals are set and you're trying to reach your goals. So that's that's important, I think, for me. Right, right. Yeah, I definitely agree. And to 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 um, piggyback on what you were talking about, I think it's okay. Like, I feel like a lot of a lot of kids when they're coming out of high school feel pressured because, like, I feel like they're they're, they're pressuring to figure it out right then and there what they want to yeah. do. And I, and and I just want to let everybody know it's okay to not know what you want to yeah. do because when you're going to college or whatever, like college is a great example. You can go to college and be an undecided major. You don't have to decide your major until at least your second year or third year, yeah. whatever, because like. And even then, like, if you go to school as undecided or whatever, and you go to school for a semester or a year, and you realize, eh, college isn't for me, you're, you're not even that much in debt, if, if at all. And then you can bounce out and go to military, you can go right into the workforce, or you can go to a different, you can go to a different college if you don't feel comfortable there. You can go yeah. to get into the trade school, like, that, that's another thing, too, like, I feel like they pressure college so much that you feel like you have to go to college, and, and, and you realistically don't there, there's a lot of people that I've known in my life that they, they went to college and they realized like yeah college isn't for me and then they go and do like the, the, the um, trade schooling and then they get a trade and next you know their, their life goes off in, yeah, in a good no, way no, you're, you're totally right and that's why I think it's important to teach these kids that I encourage college over everything that's going to be the most successful thing you can do nobody can ever take a degree away from you and your chances of land, la- learning a, or I mean, uh, land, excuse me, landing a good job after high school um, or college, I'm, I mean, um, is way more um, likely than leaving high school with zero direction and right. trying to land a big time job. So I encourage that. Mm-hmm. But like you said, if it doesn't work out, do you have other goals or do you have a, a plan in mind? So I think that's, it's just important to give these kids options. And right. as long as they're going for something, that's fine. But when they're not going for either of those, like any of those, then that's when things usually don't turn well for people. Right. But there are the exceptions, though, because some people can go right into the workforce and find a career from, I don't know, like, I wouldn't, because like me, I was working at Men's Warehouse, like, for eight years. That that, that could realistically be a career. That, that could be a oh, six-figure yeah. digit job just from selling yeah. suits all day like it is very much possible but is that going to happen to everybody no that that's right. that's a super hard thing to do is to get into the workforce and and make and have a hell of a job um yeah. but like you said if you want a good paying job that unfortunately you do i don't say unfortunately but you got to go to college you got to go to the military or into a trade school if you want to make money and get a yeah. good job that you're actually going to enjoy it too because like that's another thing yeah. that i that i'm big on is too is like finding something that you're going to enjoy like if you're going to work every day and you hate it 
why work, why work there? Find a new Absolutely. job. And, and that's the same Absolutely. thing in college. Like it, you can choose one major. You can always switch majors because most of the time you're taking um, gen eds anyway. So like you Absolutely. realize like I don't want to go to f- go to school for business. I want to go to school for psychology or something. Like you can switch up and find something that you are really genuinely going to enjoy because otherwise you're going to waste time. You're going to waste money. You're, you're just going to be miserable, and it and, and it's not a good idea. Yep, you're exactly right. But um. Let's see here. Um, what what um, what what kind of options though? Like for colleges, like because I know like you got community colleges, you got other colleges. Like don't they got like um, prep school too, for like for the athletes as well. Like you don't always have to go directly into college. You can take minor steps to get in. Isn't always an yeah. option. Yeah, I um, you know, I encourage people to when they go over the process, you know, talk with your parents, talk with guidance counselors, teachers, coaches, and find the best fit for your, yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if it's something like that you really want to enjoy going to school away from home, then maybe that's something down your lane. Right. Or, you know, if maybe you don't have the financials, maybe something like getting community college to start off to save a lot of money and get some credits at home. Right. Um, and, and also work as well. Um, and then, you know, with the prep, um, prep kind of depends on your athletic situation. You know, um, if, if you're maybe, maybe you're a big time player and you might not have the grade at the moment, um, maybe prep something kind of down your alley that you need to go um, concentrate on more and get your grades up before you take that big leap. Mm-hmm. to the next big college so um and also you know if you decide you you want to go big and you have the grades and stuff like that then i think i encourage it to to really go for it but um i think those are the options as far as college goes that to kind of really just talk to people first don't mm-hmm. jump and make a decision that's maybe not best fit for you Right. Um, sit back, kind of get advice from other people that have been around it, and then kind of make the decision from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Like getting getting feelers, whether you're going trying to figure go to college, like you can do just schedule co- college visits. Like you can go visit the campus and see if it because like you you do get that sense of feeling like man, I can't really see myself being here. And then there's some campuses you go to and you're like, yeah, I don't like it here. Like right, I, I've, right. I've been I've been on those college visits and, and really enjoyed it, but like in the same sense like i went to those I, I was accepted to tons of colleges but i ended up choosing to go to the community college route because i had that mindset of damn i ain't, i don't want to leave home and right. but, but there are like you got to realize like it's okay to leave home that's another thing like i feel like people are so worried about not leaving home which was one of my weaknesses is i, I feel like i personally missed out on a, a better opportunity a better way like I, I made my fair share of mistakes going through college. It took me a long time to get through college, way longer than normal, just to get a um, basic associate's degree where if I would have went off to college like for four years at a, like an actual university, I think I would have been in a better better situation because like I was able to more focus on school as opposed mm-hmm. to like working and and just trying to balance too much. So like, you definitely got to weigh those options. But um, sure. to to talk about the military thing too is like kids even in high school can can join like ROTC programs like there there are tons of programs that they can get into um, to to even get a feel for it because like you got you can they'll, they'll put you through like the PT test and some like basic military training and and leadership programs and stuff like that when you go through those programs so like that's another option too or even even if you don't want to do either of those you and you want to get into the trade or curious about it I'm, I'm pretty sure most companies that have this are are can come to your school because i remember like some like plumbing places and electricians would come in even to steal high and would talk to the students and stuff like that it's like i'm they're always there's there's tons of resources and options to even get a feeler out there too so i think that's important mm-hmm. but um where else can like some of these like um high school kids like get seek assistance for like getting into college or going into the military what what would you recommend well you know a lot of schools have um like different type of uh i I know they have like i'm trying to think of the word you use almost like a job fair where they'll bring colleges into your high school 
and they'll set up stands and kind of have a ton of information, flyers and stuff um, available for kids. And and then, you know, same with military, they do the same. And, and same with jobs. Like, you know, if um, you, you go around, like, to different places that have um, information available for kids, you know, I think it's important for the kids to really – don't just blow by it and act like you don't want to look it up or look at it. I think it's important to, you know, grab those brochures, ask questions, do some research on it, you know, and I, I think all that's important because depending on what you want to do in that next chapter of your life, um, it, it's important to have knowledge on something like that instead of just going into something and not knowing anything. Right, yeah, for sure, and, and and it's crazy to think like I feel like, um, like I feel like I might have been one of those kids where like I just like kind of zoomed by everything and just didn't really know a lot and didn't ask the questions. But I feel like if I the advice and the knowledge I know now, or had somebody tell me these things when I was a kid, I think I would probably be in a whole different situation. Even even during that time, whether I'm here and here or not now, but I I think that would have had a huge impact too. Is just just knowing things too, because like I feel like they don't tell us. They're like they 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 drill it into our head about going to college. Well, at least this this is this is just my experience at Steel High. But they didn't feel like give me the proper resources or the knowledge to to go down these paths like they didn't help you at all but like or you just didn't seek the the right help either you just like didn't know that that was even an option was to ask these kind of questions so like i feel like schools and coaches or whoever it is could help as well because like some of these kids might not know like if they don't know anything how are they going to know to seek help and stuff like that too and, and they're still young. They, they don't really know that kind of stuff. Like, once they get out, then they're going to realize, like, oh, man, i got to start learning. And it, it all comes with maturity, too, as well. But um, you got any other advice to uh, some of the, uh, the high school kids moving on to their next phase? Uh, I, I honestly think I probably touched most of it. Um, like I said, I think it's just important to have very good SMART goals and what you want to do, you know, and, and – when you practice, you put in the work for all of it, then I think good things will happen for you down mm-hmm. there, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I definitely agree. But if that's it, man, we can uh, go ahead and uh, start closing up the uh, the episode here. Is that oh. good? Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. What, what a conversation we just had for about it was about 48 minutes. So that, that, was, that was a pretty good conversation we just had. But unfortunately, it's time to wrap this up. But um, I personally want to take the time out to thank you again for coming on to me, uh, coming on the show with me, and uh, um, that, it, that you're definitely a great and resourceful person, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, we also want to thank everyone who uh, showed up today live, and for all those checking out later on YouTube as well. Um, definitely feel free to reach out to me or Joel if you have any questions regarding that kind of stuff. But um, Joel, where where can we uh, find you at, man? Like, if anybody wants to re- reach out to you. So, um, honestly, you know, people can reach out to me on social media and stuff like that. You know, I'm also in the Harrisburg area. You know, you'll see me at games and stuff like that. So, you know, if high school kids ever got any um, questions as far as maybe um, what to do as far as the next step in their uh, careers and they need some help or just want to chat, um, maybe I can give some advice to them or their parents. So it's real simple just to reach out for sure, social media. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll plug in your uh, your social media into the um, the, cool. the YouTube description then too, so everybody can check you out on that. But um, for me, you can follow follow me on Twitter at Mister Never Chillin underscore, or hit me up on Xbox X Never Space Chillin if you want to chat, play some games or whatever. But if you have any questions, concerns, or you want to come on the show, reach me on Facebook at Vic Brubacher, um, or check these uh, videos out live at Twitch TV forward slash Mister Never Chillin for uh, future episodes every Friday at seven p.m. Um, also be sure to check out our gaming podcast on our youtube channel uh, those episodes are live every thursday on twitch.tv forward slash lunatic underscore oblivion so be on the lookout for those but uh until then i want to thank everybody again but until next time peace Thank you.